What's good, YouTube? This is the Cardio Gamer here. Ready to do another cardio session on my bike. Level up my Orc Warrior and uh, talk to you guys in my ASMR voice. Now, you guys are ready for my ASMR voice, right? That's what I thought. So let's do it. Hey, what do I want to do? I'm going to go maybe get some more of those mana rays. I don't know. 140. Um, let me think about that. Let me go check what's actually there at the Epicurean people. Those Epicurean points that I have acquired. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Let's see. What do we have? What can I buy? What do we got? Okay, we'll come down here and see what we actually have, what we got going. Um, Chilatos, Mega Mammoth, Northern Spices, Worm Meat, Perk Ward, Mighty Rhino Dogs, Firecracker Seven, Northern Scampi, Imperial Mana Steak, Spicy Fried Harry. Hmm. Yeah. Cross cooking for her, you know. Shut the tusk. Like angel fish. We got into those angel fish, what do we say now? Northern spices. Any northern spices do we have? Eleven. All right. We have the curian points. Do we have seventeen? Oh, that's a start. Okay, it's a start. All right. Well, I guess we better go fish up some mana rays. Have some band of rays. Yeah, what do we got going on here? That's the one to rub. Random Lich King dungeon. Let's do some randoms. Get gear. Get geared up. Average four minutes in the queue, huh? Not too bad. And at least we're moving somewhat fast now. <laughs> Not as bad as it was. Go to the coast. Add some mana rays. Definitely got a long way to go. Of course, so does my blacksmithing. Blacksmithing really has a long way to go, too. Man, is there even fish in any of this craziness? I don't know if I trust fish from here. Back to 
catching my dragon angel fish now. In peace. <laughs> Alright, good. That's what I was hoping for. Did it really give me this cocksucker again?
Fishes, give me them fishes. Fishy, fishy, fishy. Oh, yeah. 
Fuga, ya. All right. I'm gonna catch some fish up here in the deep north of Alaska. Catching these angel fish instead of the salmon. Look at them. It's not even an angel fish. Dragon fin angel fish, yeah. Gotta get it right. Have to get it right. Cooking is uh, not going to be a problem, I don't think. Cooking is going to be easy mode at this point. Fishing might be tougher, but you know what I'm saying? fishing now. that I am, but I am not on my uh, Torin herbalist, so, nope, nope, I could be intoxicated, I am not an orc, he's drunk on the blood of his enemies, Rawr. that would be uh, known as red wine, to us human folk, yeah, Shorty, stop and wiggle with it, yeah. Stop and wiggle with it, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's fish jumping everywhere. It's just popping up all over the place. Like, you're not gonna catch us, bro. You're not gonna catch us. We bad, baddest in the world. Mm -hmm. but yeah, I am gonna have to do a lot of fishing. The upside here, so probably gonna get enough fish in general that uh, my cooking is gonna just skyrocket along. Not any real issues, I don't think, at this point. <laughs> Heck, I've got so many of those manta rays mounting up. Or the angel fish, either one, honestly. I'm sure, I want to get to 25 of the first. Or both, or either, or neither. It doesn't even matter. Um, 
mining though is about to be a big deal because that is really coming along slow. A lot slower than uh, I would like. <laughs> then I really get a weed. Even with my good fishing pole, I need that hat. That's what I need. That's what I need is that hat. In these rock fan groovers. <laughs> Who knows we need the mana race? Just messing with us. I'm not gonna give you what you need, bro. Got us twisted. Are you all serious? Don't mess with me like that? Must not know who I is. I'm a goddamn juggernaut, bitch. Must not know who I is. 400 fishing. I'm halfway there. I'm halfway there. Oh God, now. <laughs> Pass. Be past the halfway mark at the next kill up. Should be coming along shortly. I think I'm going to have to cast all over a thousand more times. Probably two thousand times to do this. Or do the dailies every day. See, that's also an option. Those dailies do add up. In fact, this year alone, they're probably worth a hundred points. any other fringe benefits. Ooh, because this is going to get insanely long. Yeah, this is not even like a joke. Yeah, it's kind of like, yeah, it's going to get long. It's like, yeah, you're not kidding. I know. said already the upside is that I'm there like I could technically probably get my cooking to 425 just off what I've got now so if I really wanted to I want me to spend as few of my points as I have to to get there Ideally, I'm probably going to want to get 25 of one of these fish. Just for the wiggle room. Just for the wiggle room. Limitless fish school here, although not very good skill ups. of a perk. <laughs> this 
is even really a manta ray spot. Gotta wonder. Gotta wonder at this point. Doesn't seem like it. I think it's just messing with me. Alright. Find another manta ray spot. Maybe get us some cobalt on the way. Or <laughs> manta rays, so yeah. Manta rays are mounting up. Just say that to me. Bro. Know who you're fucking with. Goddamn juggernaut. Must not know. <laughs> Must not know who I is. Skill ups are nice, I like the skill ups, so we do more mana rays. It doesn't matter though, like it doesn't matter if I only get a handful. I'm gonna hit my numbers anyways, and I'm skilling up my fishing. It's just probably more important that you can get the, the good stuff at this point. So, it doesn't matter, I could just go to one that's not even a mana ray hole. I felt like it. Gotta put that in context sometimes. So those potential skill ups. And see, that was a double up. I took that attitude and look what happened. Just letting happen what happened. I care because I'm getting skill points. Then I get a mana ray and a skill point. Like straight up and long ago. It happens when you don't care. And you're just like, I'm just here fishing. I'm gonna get what I'm gonna get. And I'll eventually get what I want if I'm just patient enough anyways. So it doesn't matter if it takes five casts or a hundred casts, you know. Because every time I cast, I'm closer to that goal, no matter how many it's going to take. And it's like that with a lot of things in life, you know. Sometimes you will have to work a lot longer and a lot harder than you anticipated to reach a goal. But, you know, the point is, 
are you continually moving towards that goal? All right, are you moving towards it? Even if it's slowly, an inch at a time, you're, you're still closer to your goal. You know? And yeah, we obviously have a limited amount of time to do anything in limited time on Earth. So, I um, mean, don't set goals that are impossible to do in a lifetime. You know? Well, you can, because you might get lucky. But, you know, you understand that when you undertake that endeavor, that yeah, it might be a long shot. It might take more time and work than you, you know, had ever anticipated. But sometimes if you know that ahead of time, you know that you're taking a gamble. And that's a little different than knowing you're always moving towards a goal. But you got to be a realist about those gambles and accept that. You have to accept that, that you know what you're sacrificing and you know what the gamble is, you know, so that you can be prepared for that, uh, either possibility, whether you win or lose that gamble. And you have to anticipate both um, because, you know, it's like Schrodinger's cat. Till he opened the box, the particle said, the cat was both alive and dead simultaneous. You know? And it's the same. Really, that could be applied to goals that are a gamble in life, couldn't they? You both achieved and failed that goal at the same time until you get there. And you have to live in that state of understanding both all possible outcomes. You gotta understand and accept them. Because if you take a gamble and you can't live with the consequences of failure, you can't live with any way that it's gonna turn out, then uh, don't do it. You gotta be able to live with that because you're gonna have to go, if it's, a, if it's a long shot on anything, you're gonna have to be able to accept that if you gave a real shot at it and you optimize your chance your opportunities the best of your ability and you still fail that's nothing to be ashamed of now did you deserve it because you put everything into it no clearly not because you didn't you didn't get it but but you can take pride in knowing that it was the bong shot that got you not your lack of effort if you genuinely know that you put 100% in. And, and that can be part of your motivation uh, for any sort of even gamble, is that you know there's the possibility you're going to fail. And if you fail, your only consolation is going to be knowing that you did everything that you could, that it wasn't your fault at that point if you failed because you took every possible option available to you to get there and it just didn't pan out and that's how you work it you know that actually increases your chances of success of knowing that the only way I can live with the, my failure is if I know that I really and truly gave a hundred percent not claim that I gave a hundred percent I explored every possible option I did everything I could to stack my odds in my favor on that long shot and I'm not going to be able to live with it if I fail because I didn't see some opportunity. And that's the difference. That's the difference. Win or lose, you've got to be able to live with the consequences. And sometimes the consequences of that, you, you did or didn't do everything that you could to get there. And, and if you didn't get there because one of the options that you had open was something that you couldn't live with morally, maybe it would compromise your morals in a way that you couldn't live with, then okay, accept the disappointment of not reaching the goal, but be proud that you didn't compromise your integrity 
Now, on the other hand, if you can live with compromising your integrity, you can live with compromising your morals to get to that goal, then they were never really your morals to begin with. They are morals you wanted to have, but, but you weren't convicted. You didn't have convictions towards them. They were never really yours. They're probably assigned to you by someone else. Someone else tells you you need to be. But it clearly wasn't who you are, because if you really do hold a moral view, uh, you're not going to compromise that view if you really are serious about it, uh, just to reach some goal. Or maybe you didn't realize that going in. You know, that's also a possibility in life, isn't it? And maybe you didn't realize that you'd be willing to compromise till you got there. But at that point, you still have to accept well, that moral wasn't really yours, that ethic wasn't yours. And if it was, if you really believe that it was, then you got bigger problems, don't you? Because usually, if you have an ethic or a moral, you believe there's some power sometimes enforcing it in the universe. Uh, you know. And if that's the case, then you might have to answer to that, that power, or that God, or that uh, whatever it is. Maybe the law, you know, well, just things to think about, things to ponder when we set our goals. Because I see a lot of that out there in the world. I'm, I'm older than you guys might realize. I've seen a lot of people who go into an endeavor blind. They think they want a goal. They think it's a worthwhile goal, but they don't realize that the only way to reach that goal is to compromise their integrity and that everyone almost everyone, with maybe a few exceptions or maybe no exceptions, actually did have to compromise themselves, compromise their integrity, compromise their ethics, their morals to reach that goal, and they go into it blind. And that's something, that is something um, I would say to most young people out there, think on that. When you say, hey, this is what I want, this is what I want in life, this right here, do some research and make sure that it's really and truly what you want. Because sometimes what we want comes at a price. And we don't, can't always know that price, I'll be honest. Um, there have been things that I wanted, um, that I worked towards, still working towards, that the price going into it wasn't knowable. You know? that I would lose friends, that I would have problems over reaching that goal. That goal that I really did want, I didn't understand the, the ramifications of it. And that's the interesting thing to ask ourselves too. That's the interesting thing. When you're on the path, when you're on the path, and I'm on one of those right now, I'm gonna get my details out of it. I'm on one of those paths right now that had someone asked me, because I haven't finished, I haven't completed that goal, it's part of the way there. I haven't achieved my victory yet. And I have paid a price for it uh, in terms of, of friendships and problems in my life that I could never have predicted. And, and they were a heavy price. They were a heavy price. And I still haven't achieved my reward yet. I haven't achieved my victory for all those, for those losses, not fully. Um, and yeah, I mean, when I say I paid a price, meaning it's for prices that sometimes I regret, um, that there has been real loss, real loss. Um, would I still do it? Do I still want that goal? Enough that knowing right now, if I was to go back and make the choice that I'm sitting at there right now, still haven't completed that goal and all that it entails, I'm like halfway there and I've lost a lot for it. Would I do it anyways and suffer those losses knowing that I'd be where I'm at with it, behind where I thought I would be at it and haven't paid a heavier price for it with a good shot at it still, but no guarantee that I'm gonna get it. No guarantee, but I still pay those prices. Um, 
I got to look back in retrospect, I would say yes. Because, I mean, the argument could be made, well, because you're, you're caught up in the investment trap, you have to keep going. You've got to justify it in your mind. But in this case, the price versus the alternative, the alternative of failing was too great. It was too great. And I'd still pay those prices uh, for the opportunity. And that's what it comes down to. But those are things that a lot of younger people, you're going to have to think about through your life. You're going to face things like that. Maybe you won't. Maybe you're going to live a quiet, peaceful life. You're going to have minimal problems. You're going to have the, whatever it is that you, you, you consider the perfect life. For one person, it might be the white picket fence and the wife and two and a half kids. Maybe that's you. Maybe you'll get that. Maybe you're never, your family's never, never going to have health problems. You might not even want to be rich. You just want to have enough. Maybe you're going to be comfortable. You're going to work hard. You're going to have a job you like. Your wife's going to love you. She's going to have maybe a career she likes. You're not going to fight a lot. Your kids are going to be great. They're not going to get sick. They're not going to have cancer. And everything's going to be hunky-dory. You know, life does work out like that for some people. For most people it doesn't, but it does happen. It does happen. And for those people, life is great. Um, although what I will say, does it make those people strong people? Do those people ever really find out who they are? Maybe not. Does it matter because they're happy and they're fulfilled? I don't know. I don't know. But that is the one thing I will say. Adversity. Adversity and struggle and sacrifice and loss um, can help a person find themselves. It can help them define who they are. It can help them come to a realization. Epiphanies as to who they are as a person and maybe epiphanies about their own meaning of life. Um, and maybe that's what it's all about. Maybe that's what it's about. Maybe we all have a meaning in life that we have to find. Because something's predestined. There's some power, maybe God, maybe the universe, that has put things into motion. Or maybe there is no purpose other than the one that you find and make for yourself. Now, I can't tell you the answer to that. I have my own beliefs, but I can't prove my beliefs. I can't prove my beliefs. So, there it is. Adversity. Um, I, think, I think that's part of what defines the human experience and defines us as just human beings. Um, adversity and struggle because it's almost a universal experience only a very very tiny number of people really and truly go through life without true adversity and struggle and you know people always do that people when they're going through hard times it's always why me why did this happen to me why did these things happen to me this isn't fair but you know what Billions of people have gone through that. Billions of people have sat there screaming to the universe and screaming to God, why me? Why do I deserve this to happen to me? It's part of the human experience. And almost every one of us at one point in our lives, or maybe a hundred times or a thousand times in our lives, but everyone at least once, Almost everyone, it's almost universal, is going to find yourself sitting in an experience where you're feeling sorry for yourself and the adversity and struggles that you've gone through, and you're going to scream out, Why me? And you know what? You're probably not going to get an answer. Maybe you will. Maybe you'll get a vision. Maybe God, maybe aliens, maybe something out there will tell you why. Maybe it was your own doing. And we've all been there, haven't we? We've all been there and realized we had decisions that we felt might have been forced upon us um, by our parents, 
by someone, a boss, that wasn't fair, that put us in that situation. But you know what? We all still made a choice. Now, we didn't make that choice thinking that's what's going to happen. Um, you know, we didn't know that. But we made some choice that put us there. Sometimes it was something we knew was risky. Sometimes it was a bad choice. Sometimes it was uh, that seemed like an innocent choice. I just did what my dad told me to do. I did what my dad thought was right, but that's what you did. You let him pick it. And you know, maybe, maybe that's what caused it. And you know what? Who's to say that it wouldn't have happened anyways or something equally bad? You know? Who's to say? You know, that's, that's life. That's life. I know I'm getting all philosophical on you guys. Um, people who know me in real life laugh about this. They're like, he's really like this. This guy really is. Um, and you know, I like to sound all wise, but you know what? I'm not. I'm not that wise. I have. I, some people think I am. I'm not. Sometimes it's all bullshit. <laughs> but you know what? Sometimes bullshit. Sometimes bullshit can help a person carry through. You know, sometimes you need a little bit of bullshit. Sometimes you need a little bit of bullshit to help you through the tough times, to find a purpose. Um, I'm not saying to intentionally bullshit people, because you know what, I think that comes back on you. I think if you intentionally deceive people, I do think that comes back on you. But, um, now, fortunately, in the real world, too, this is where the real world bites you. Sometimes other people choose to bring things back on you. You think that you deceived them, but you really didn't. And when that happens, and I, I've been there, sometimes that'll make you stand there and create those moments where you scream at the universe. I've been punished, and I've been hurt by other people who decided I deserve justice, right? I deserve justice for something wrong that I had done, that I didn't do. Maybe they thought you told a horrific lie, but you didn't. You know what, that happens too. That happens. Those are the moments. Those are the sort of moments right there, because you know, when sometimes other people create their justice and that justice wasn't right, those are the times when you'll stand there and scream out to God, scream out for help. Um, those moments define us. Those sort of moments define us. Uh, again, that's the human experience. That's the human experience. It is what it is. That's reality. And you know what? I guess I get introspective like this when I'm sitting here fishing. Fishing does this to me. I got 420 on my uh, fishing, by the way. You know? Man. Yeah. I've definitely gone through some of that. Like, uh, on a real serious level. You know, being falsely accused of something that people thought was terrible. You know, that wouldn't have even been that terrible. But people's perception of what's terrible. And that's the, the ridiculous part. You know, I've personally gone through some stuff in my life where I was accused by a lot of people of something they thought was horrific. That truth be told, not only did I not, I was actually innocent of but it wasn't even that bad. It wasn't even something that bad. It's not something that I would think would justify hating a person or wanting to harm them, even had it been true. But, you know, had people who literally 
wanted to kill me and literally wanted to ruin my life over them thinking I lied about something. Over a day, something that really wasn't even a lie that hurt anybody, that wasn't even a lie, it actually was the truth. So it's not even one of those, someone told a lie to con you, make you lose money, to testify against you, get you in trouble. No, not like that sort of lie. Not that type of lie. A lie that they thought was a fanciful, untrue story about myself. It didn't involve them. It didn't involve anyone losing money. It didn't involve deceiving anyone. But because it sounded fanciful, those people uh, hated me for it, decided to try to ruin my life for it. Um, you know? And it wasn't even a lie. It was actually true. And even had it been a lie, it wouldn't have been that bad. Actually, the fact that it was true was technically worse than telling a lie. You know? How's that for irony? Maybe that's justice. Maybe because I, I admitted the truth of, of that I personally had done something that wasn't particularly right. That because there would have been no real punishment for it, uh, the way I admitted it, no one could really punish me for it. Um, and it was the truth, but because it was perceived as a lie, people blew it out of proportion and decided that me lying about it was worse than if it had been true, which was the crazy part. It actually wouldn't have been the actual truth. And it being true was actually, like, karmically speaking, good person, uh, was worse. Like, I would say considerably worse. Now, that's irony. And I guess the argument I could look at that and say, why me? Why why'd this happen to me? Because I did something bad. Maybe me admitting it indirectly had me punished in a way that I had to pay a price to the universe to come to terms with that. But I wasn't punished because of what I did by others because they couldn't wrap their mind around that, that they had to punish me. Uh, and I had to pay a price to square things up with, you know, with God or the universe in a different way. And the fact that actually being punished because I told the truth as if it was, but you know, perceived as if it was a lie. But that lie actually made people hate me, that they thought was a lie. Uh, it's irony. You know, could we argue that that's justice? Maybe. Maybe it is. Maybe that was God's way of punishing me for what I had done. And the fact that not only uh, being punished for it, but the fact that no one believed it was in and of itself its own punishment for having actually done it. Isn't that some shit? That's the stuff I have to think about when I lay awake at night. I don't know, I thought I would share with the five or ten of you who are going to watch this video. Just stuff for you to think about. It is what it is. But yeah, we live in a crazy world. We live in a crazy world. Where am I at on time? Look at that hour rolling in. Wow. So, a whole hour of fishing. Look what it's netted me. Enough fishing points to train up? Probably. I need one more point. Enough stuff to take my cooking to a ridiculous uh, spot. Yeah, probably. There we are. There we are. Yeah, the Imperial Manta Rays, look at that. They'll probably turn green on me pretty easily. So, 425. There it is. So now we go back, deal with all this cooking, 
now I just got to get my mining done. I think that actually squared me away on these professions for this entire expansion for the next 10 levels. Wow. Okay. That's some shit. Oh, we got that black jelly. What's that do? Probably a cooking fire. I got a cooking fire right here, bro. What you gonna do? And then we're gonna do this manta ray. Five block and surprise. Fish cakes, golden carp. All right. Hope I grabbed the right thing. Imperial mana steak. Northern spices. All right. Bye bye now. How many do I have left? Twelve. I use not even half of my stuff. after this. There we go. Past 425. It may not even let me train it. It might be like, you got five more levels. You know. It might say that. But it didn't say that, did it? And then let's go all the way to 500. next time.